All right, guys, beard advice series time. I got another good beard for you today, so stay tuned. Hey guys, Brian Haywood here. Welcome back to my Beards and Banjos YouTube channel where we discuss tips and tricks for your beards. We do some product reviews and unboxings and we have this beard advice series where you guys can send in a couple of pictures to me to the email address you see below. I take a look at that for a couple of weeks and you get featured in your own beard advice series video. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. And uh, today we've got Nathan. Now, if you'll take a look at Nathan, he's got one of those nice, big, full, dense beards. Uh, and it looks really good. Um, I don't see a whole lot I can offer here, but we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of areas of concern uh, that he had for me. Uh, all the pictures I've seen of Nathan, he's either got it styled uh, where it looks like he's used a blow dryer or a heat brush, that kind of thing. He's got everything kind of uh, going straight down. Uh, but then a lot of the other pictures are more kind of the natural look to it where um, it's not quite as flat through here. It's nice and full, big, dense, kind of fluffy beard. Um, so I'm not exactly sure about which one you go with the most. So if you uh, only do the heat brush and style it straight down just on occasion, then maybe you want to think about when you trim your beard, you want to trim it to look as best as you can when it's kind of the out uh, in the natural state, the fluffy state. And that kind of goes back to uh, some of the controversies in the community about when, uh, what to do when you trim your beard. Should you style it out and blow dry it and put product in and all of that? For me, it depends on what look you're going for. Uh, how you normally wear your beard is kind of how I would uh, trim it. Uh, but you do, especially if you got a really curly one, you do at some point want to do something to pull everything out. So applying some heat and uh, tools and stuff to get everything out to its full length. If not, the stuff under here uh, is going to uh, play tricks on you. And you'll think it'll be good uh, when it's kind of all in this bushy state. And then you'll comb it and you'll have these random hairs that, that come out. So uh, Nathan's concern with me, uh, to me, he said that he was um, about the taper, about how to taper it. Um, so once again, the, to, to me, I think the, the natural look on your beard, where it's just kind of out there in its own natural state, looks really good. Um, it also looks good when you, when you have it all down with the heat brush styled stuff out. Uh, but it, with a, a beard that's so dense as, as the one that you've got, it ends up being like you're, you're fighting against this natural state uh, too much. Uh, maybe sometimes it just kind of depends on how much you want to fight it. I mean, I've got similar style to it. Mine's got a lot of waves and stuff to it. Mine's not nearly as dense, um, but I'm starting to get the bigger look to mine uh, right now. So what I've done is to gone away from the super taper as I was doing before. So when I have my beard a little bit shorter than what I have now, I was like making everything super flat here. So I would use the Brio trimmers and do the, the hedge trimming, if you will. So you can still do some of that hedge trimming, but not worry about going straight down with it. So instead of having your head being like a box and have all super clean lines on it, you can actually have your head be more rounded, right? So you could uh, kind of have it in this natural state. Um, and then you can go back and look at it, maybe just do a little sculpting. And that sculpting doesn't have to be straight. The sculpting can be to make it into a nice little, um, a little bump here, a little wave. You want it to kind of come out in a natural uh, arcing motion and then kind of have it straight from there. And then a little bit of uh, that arcing motion on the bottom as well to get that full kind of rounded shape to it. Um, once your beard gets as long as uh, yours is right now, I don't personally, I don't like the super straight across box look. Um, I like a little bit more rounded to it uh, on the corners and stuff. So I like both of those looks. It just kind of depends on which way you want to go with it. Uh, and he said something about his, the, the curl right here uh, on his waves wants to, to kind of curl back and get into his ears and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I had that same uh, little curl right there. So a couple things you can do for that, uh, if you're using the, the heated brush and that kind of stuff, is to make sure you're going 
uh, sideways with it to try to get it to, to go forward. You can congregate your balm there. If you're using mustache wax, after you put it on your mustache, you take the, the ends of it, I always kind of hit this area on whatever's left over on my hands. And when you do the trimming, um, so it kind of depends on where we're talking about taking the taper to. For me, what I see, I think kind of a, a pretty high taper, not to go way down into the bulk of your beard would be the way to go with that. And then you can also do a little bit of tapering like on the edges here so you can pull part of this back and kind of have it going in uh, at a little bit of a taper on the sides just a little bit that'll take away a couple of those little hairs close to your ears uh, but also if you're, you're changing the way you're doing the tapering just that length and the weight and the bulk to it will kind of get it down below where it's aggravating uh, on your ears if it gets a little bit longer so, um, and, and I like the way you've got your mustache. It's not a separate mustache. I think you could do that if you want. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but um, the, you've got a nice big um, full mustache that goes over your top lip, but it, it, it seems to be at a good spot there where it's not too aggravating. Uh, and I'm not sure if you do any of that um, yourself or you go to the barber, but the good thing about trimming it yourself is you can kind of trim it on a weekly basis to kind of keep it in the same spot. Whereas if you're trying to keep that length that you've got right now and you're going to the barber, but it's only every once a month, by the time the end of that month comes around, it's already in your mouth. So um, learning to do a little bit of routine maintenance for everybody out there is always good. Uh, to, you can actually keep a particular look a little bit better if you can trim it on a weekly one to two to three week basis instead of having to wait a month or two to go see the barber. So I started thinking about styles. I saw in that one picture where uh, it looks like maybe the middle of your beard that looks like the sides have kind of outpaced the middle of it just a little bit. Uh, so maybe the next time you are doing a, more of a, a major trim there, you could take uh, take stuff a little bit off more on the sides and let that part in the middle uh, catch up. It's not, it's not forking exactly, but it, it's got that little spot there. And I saw that on one picture and then some of the other pictures I didn't see that. So you may be taking care of that already. Uh, you, uh, Nathan's beard reminds me a lot of Chris that we did a, a couple of uh, videos back. Uh, Chris Burnett, Chris B. You can take a look at some of his pictures on Instagram, give you some ideas. Uh, and then I found this guy on Instagram. He was featured on like one, the, one of the, the major beard websites on Instagram, Beard for All or something. His picture popped up uh, and I actually was able to dig and I found his uh, particular Instagram page, Renee Madsen or something like that. But he's got he's got that nice big bushy look. All right. So I, I don't want you to get so uh, so ingrained that it needs to be in the box and straight down and flat and the flat front and all that. It's OK to be natural. and Let it poof out. You can still have that look and be uh, and, and go with every, what, what style you want. So if you want to go with the lumber bat, lumberjack outdoorsman kind of big puffy thing, you can do that. If you want to be a little more refined and dress up, you can still make that look work for you. So uh, I don't want you just to necessarily think, okay, uh, I'm getting dressed up. I have to make my beard flat and straight. Um, you can do that with the big natural beard as well. You just have to rock it. All right. Um, so don't fight too much against the natural growth of your beard would be my suggestion for everybody out there. Uh, it kind of depends on your beard texture. Once your beard texture gets more dense than me, uh, then kind of what I've got, then the hair dryer and straightening brush uh, can work for you, but it might just be going a little bit too far away from the nat what your beard wants to do naturally. So that's always a consideration for a lot of guys out there I wanted to make mention of. Um, other than that, I don't really have any suggestions. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, it looks great. Um, and keep me updated. By the way, I think we're at the time where I want to try to get uh, some of you guys that have already been featured. Start sending me your pictures. I want to see if I can put that together after our first 25 of these things. I want to see if we can do a little flashback, show you a quick update on some of these guys. I've already seen a few of them. They're looking great. All right, so be looking for that soon. I uh, also got a top 10 list of some of my favorite scents currently. I'm going to try to wrap all that stuff up here uh, in July because uh, I go back to school on August 1st. So things will probably be slow down a little bit here on the channel then but i'll still be doing the beard advice series at least one a week and then whatever reviews and stuff i can fit in uh, i'll be doing those as well so as always guys i appreciate you guys joining me and we'll see you on the next video thanks